So this might be a really weird thing to say, but are your toggled areas getting you down? Well, then the Anim Ball class, a little unknown class in Unity, might be just what you're looking for. You see, here's an inspector window with a toggle that shows and hides a set of values. Maybe you're hiding them because they're irrelevant for a character trait, or maybe it's to minimize scrolling so people can get to data quicker. But as you can see, it's really dull and it's kind of lifeless. But what if this toggling had more life to it? Let me show you how with a simple change to a script using this Anim Ball class. So here is the custom editor that we were just looking at. And as you can see, it's pretty basic. I have a toggle here that sets a ball that I store. And I say, okay, if it's set to true, then show all these details. And if it's set to false, don't show all these details. And obviously that's terribly boring. So what we want to do is we want to change it out. We want to use the Anim Ball class and we get that from Unity Editor Animated Values. And we'll just start that off as null. Now, this is an animated ball. It's saying, okay, if you're true or if you're false, we're gonna animate between those two particular values. And I'll show you how that works. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna initialize it. So we go and we say, okay, this is going to be a new animated ball. There we are. And we then want to change this toggle to say target. Now, why is that? Well, what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, you're currently true or false, and we're gonna to move to this point. You're the next target to be true or false. Now, to use this, we need to do a layout group. And it's a particular layout group, it's called the fade group. And we're going to provide that fade group with the value that we're faded to. And this is the lerp in between. This is the value that it's going to go between, between the true and false. And we're going to close that off. There we go. And when we begin a group, we have to end a group. So we'll come into here and we'll say editor GUI layout dot end fade group. Now this isn't going to actually do much on its own because when we're not in play mode, the update loop is for the gameplay. The update loop that's on the editor side only happens when something happens. So when you're moving or you're selecting something in the scene view, things get updated, they get repainted. So we actually have to tell it, okay, we want you to repaint on the regular to show that this is actually being updated. So we'll come in here and we'll say when the values changed, We'll add a listener and here we could just say, okay, we're just going to go straight to repaint because we don't need anything else. And this repaint is just a functionality of the editor class that will repaint this particular inspector. So let's save this and go back into Unity. So back in the inspector, we can still see our wording, our title and our toggle. But now when we press it, oh, there we go. We get a nice movement of the actual area opening and closing. It's not just this straightforward blinkingness, this hide in this show. And that we could call tool juice. And if you haven't come across the term juice before, it's usually used when we talk about gameplay to make a game more energetic, to make it more appealing to the user. Well, we can do the same with our tools. Why shouldn't our tools get the same sort of love that our games do? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying to yourself, hey, there wasn't a checkbox at the beginning. There was a nice little arrow before the label. Well, okay, there was, and let me show you how to do it. It's just a little bit tidier. We'll jump into Visual Studio, and I've got the code already laid out via the power of editing. And all we're doing here is we're saying, okay, give me an icon, and this is all this does is it pulls icons from these wordings, from this library. And at the moment, I'm just using the Unity ones of drop down and play button for my two things. It's saying, if I'm true or false, give me either one. And then I'm going to display that on Button. And here's the button here. And I'm just doing that between a begin and an end horizontal. So I've got a label that comes after the button. And I've said to the label, okay, I want you to be in an editor style of a bold label. You don't really have to do this coloring thing, but I find that I don't like the way the buttons are displayed when I'm doing these little arrows. So all I do is I clear out the background. I make it clear so they don't look like buttons, they look like arrows. And then I put that back, otherwise it will screw up all your little layouts like your sliders, etc. afterwards. So that's very basically the code. 
So back in Unity, now we have our little button here and we have a drop down. So this looks a little bit nicer. It looks a little bit more like an area rather than some weird check mark that we've got after it. And as you can see, I've done that all in like less than five minutes. And that's it. Now, whenever you toggle an area, you'll be comforted by the fact that you juiced it up. And I'm sorry there isn't more to this one. It's just a simple little trick that makes me happy that not many Unity developers seem to know about. But Animball does have a sibling class that you can use for even more impressive tooling things. So let me know in the comments if I should do a longer form video on that. And after you finished writing that comment, why not watch the video on screen now?